Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes, my name is Phoenix. If this is your first time visiting and you start to love what you are hearing, please consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell, set that to all so you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video which happens to be daily. If you are interested in becoming a member of the channel or would like to tip in with a cup of coffee, all of that information can be found down below in the description. Without further ado, it is now time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro, there will be an ad, I'll read the first story, there will be an ad, and after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. This happened in 2008, when I was only 9 years old. I lived in a townhome community, where each road had two sides of homes, and between the backs of the houses, there was a back road with alleyways that went in between each building section. I lived on the edge of one of these, and my townhome was on one of the alleyways. I lived on one street, and across the back road, on the opposite side, lived an elderly woman whose name I don't even know. I am not sure what her situation was, but for whatever reason, she never liked me specifically. She was creepy and spray-painted all of her windows so nobody can see inside her house. However, that never stopped her from sometimes staring out of one of her bedroom windows directly at mine and keeping it open at night to shine a red strobe light into my room across the way. She used to yell how she hated us. I was in the fourth grade, and on a particular January morning, I had unfortunately missed the bus. My dad sent me outside to get into the car so he could drive me, and he said he'd follow me out soon after. As I was walking to my dad's car, she came out of the alleyway next to my house, slowly, with a gigantic kitchen knife behind her back. She raised it and started running after me. I was faster than her, so I was able to avoid her and was able to get into the house. She walked and stood on the neighbor's porch across the way and stared at my house. I was terrified. My dad ran out and yelled at her, and she said she wanted to get rid of us stupid kids. My parents called the police, but the police sent her home and had an ambulance pick her up later. My parents went to some kind of court meeting about it, but I don't really know the details. I didn't see her again after that, until one year later. I don't remember the day, but it had snowed that morning, so I was going to run out of the front door and play in the snow. I opened the door to see her standing on the porch, but looking out towards the road. I panicked, closed and locked the door. I ran up to my parents' room and told them what had happened, and we saw her walk off the porch up the street. I never saw her again after that. My family has since moved far away from there. But people I know say she still lives there, and her windows are still the same spray-painted windows. Though it doesn't affect me as much as it used to, I still don't like being around knives. I have a lovely patio in my garden and lovely plants that grow along the sides. The next door neighbor's cat though, oh look how nice the garden is. What can I do to mess that up? Oh, I know, let's take a shit. At first it wasn't that bad, just annoying, but the cat was doing it more and more often, and cleaning up cat shit became a daily chore. I had a word with the neighbor about it, and she said she can't really do anything about it. I said, well, if that's the case, do you mind coming over each day to clean up after it? She then gets a raging hump over that and says it's her cat. It can do what it likes. I told her I'll scoop the poop and then throw it over into her garden then. And that's exactly what I did. 
It got to the point where she told me she would tell her mother to come over and yell at me. So, around came mom to pay me a visit. I opened the door and, oh my god, posh hat, really posh clothes and all this makeup on. The only thing that could be described as a moose was indeed her mother. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. She had a right pop at me with all of her stuck-up posh words. I told her that her daughter's cat keeps shitting in my garden, and I'm fed up with it. I shut the door in the end. I'm not listening to a raging bitch posh up your own backside sort of person. I continued scooping poop over the fence, and then she was throwing it right back. So, I got a few things for the garden to keep the cat out, because the war with poop was not going to end, and was just getting silly. The bleeping sounds didn't work, nor did the add-on to the fence. My friend told me about this box that lets out a horrible high-pitched sound that would even send a wolf packing. He showed me his, and damn... What a horrible sound that makes. I thought that would be perfect considering it made me nearly run out of the house. I bought one, set it up, and it worked. The cat shot off as if it just sniffed up a line of coke. I thought, problem solved. Wasn't long until the neighbor complained about the horrible sound. So I told her, well, come around to clean up then if it takes a shit and I'll remove it. A week later, I sat eating my breakfast, feeling nice and relaxed, and suddenly, I hear that sound which I haven't heard for a while. The sound didn't stop, and I thought it had broke. I went to have a look, and this little bitch is sat on top of it. I still had a while where it didn't poop in my garden, but it started again, even with that horrible noise. So, back to the firing range. I literally couldn't believe it. I phoned up my friend and he thought I was having a laugh. I even went to get a water gun and shoot the cat each time, but it just gets used to everything. My other friend said to set out poison for it, but no, I don't want to harm the cat. I mean, a good ass whooping has crossed my mind a few times, but I don't actually want to harm it in any way. I just want a nice, clean, shitless garden. So, like I said, back to the firing range. Neighbor kicking off and throwing it back. And then there's today. I don't know what the cat had eaten, but this was a proper banger. The cat had dropped, and the smell had turned to my stomach. Little did I know that the neighbor's mother was sat in the garden, about to get clobbered with a sloppy cat shit. Oh my god. I mean, it was an accident. I didn't know she was there. Anyway, I scooped it all up and shot it over the fence, and I heard an almighty scream, which made me jump out of my skin. I quickly looked over the fence, and her mom had been splattered in the face with the cat shit. <laughs> Oh my god, that poor woman. I'm sorry you all, I don't pre-read these stories. <laughs> oh Jesus, all right. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh my ass off. The thought of this pampered up your own ass being covered in rap was just so hilarious. I just said, I'm so sorry and ran inside to finish laughing. Every time I would stop, I'd think about it again and end up laughing, like that hyena from Lion King. I'm still laughing now. After stitching my lungs back together, I went around to say sorry because seriously, that really was an accident. The mother had a wash, obviously. All the makeup had come off her hair and was all over the place, so she didn't look like a moose no more. She looks like a bloodhound in a wind tunnel. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love my British people. Okay. <sighs> After saying sorry, the mother stormed out, and me and the neighbor had a chit-chat about everything, and she agreed to try to keep the cat off my garden. 
I told her I don't mind the cat being in the garden, but do mind when it uses my garden as a toilet. I mean, the odd poo from time to time is no big deal, but my garden is constantly filling up with cat shit. That's when it takes the piss. So I'm hoping this sorts itself out. I don't want to be at war with my neighbor all the time, though. In a very small way, it has been fun. So for context, my partner and I got our townhouse halfway through 2022. We bought the house in our hometown, so we just felt like it was meant to be. The first couple months were amazing, and we had so many game nights and had cute little family gatherings. For it being a townhouse, it's perfect for our little fur family. At the time, a cat and a dog, when we moved into the house next to us, separate from the townhouses. It sat empty until 2023, when our new neighbors moved in. We also got a second dog in early 2023. The new neighbors were not the type to come say hi and have a conversation, and we're okay with that. In May 2023, my partner and I had come home around the same time, and we both parked out front on the public street. My partner had parked near the edge of the neighbor men's property line, and next thing we knew, my partner was getting called an R slur and other profanities and told to move their car. The neighbor man was furious. My partner parked in front of his house on the street because his girlfriend would not be able to back out of the driveway in the morning. My partner nicely told him he would move and did while also informing him it is a public street and are plenty of parking distances away. Well, the next day, a nail had gotten into my partner's tire. What a weird coincidence, right? Well, luckily, our house came with pre-installed cameras from the previous owner, so we just powered them back on since we felt like we needed to use them now. It was from then I decided to park out back and let my partner back out front so it's easier for them to drive. Now, we thought it was over with the neighbor man because he was quiet all summer and halfway through the fall of 2023. November rolled around and my partner was taking the dogs out and the neighbor man was outside as well and decided to say, I'm going to kill those dogs. And my partner responds with, Hey, that's not necessary. And the neighbor man went off on my partner again, spewing harsh slurs and threatening to kill us and the dogs with the guns he has. He could not have a conversation or hold a coherent thought. The last thing we want to do is call the cops and would much rather him just act normal. Needless to say, the non-emergency cops were called that night, and a report was made. We thought the neighbor man had given up, but nope. The next day, he showed up with a pit bull. My guess is he borrowed it from a friend to try and intimidate us. I ignored him and took our dogs out as usual, and the neighbor man was out back with the pit bull. But I guess he heard me come out front, so he decided to bring the pit bull out front as well. The pit bull was not on a leash, and his yard was not fenced well. As soon as I heard the front door open, I grabbed my dog and ran inside. I just didn't want to risk my dog or myself getting hurt. That pit bull didn't last long, as I heard cries of pain from an all night. That dog was gone just as quickly as it had shown up. The winter months were quiet, as I guess it was too cold for the neighbor man to cause any havoc. That was until two days before Valentine's Day. My partner was getting ready for work, and I was just sitting on the couch when I heard a human barking. For context, the neighbors across the alley from us have two large dogs that are outside barking all day. My dogs are quiet. Well, as I heard a human barking, I go check the cameras and I notice the neighbor man flicking off the cameras and calling us the R-slur 
and then goes into the ping stance along the side of his girl's house. He also was throwing trash into our yard over his fence. My partner called the cops once more, and they gave us the same talk as the last time they came. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the neighbor man yelled at the cop for accidentally parking in his driveway. It wasn't until later, when I was looking back at the camera footage, that I noticed the sound of a can hitting the ground. Luckily, it hadn't rained that night, so I went outside to collect the can, and it was filled with human urine. We followed up with the cop over the phone and asked if there is anything they could do now that it was not just intentional trash tossed over, but pecans and bottle bombs. Nothing really happened, but the trash got picked up at some point by a random man. We thought the neighbor man would have calmed down by now, but things have just been getting progressively worse. The neighbor man seems to think that every time the cameras go off that we're tuning in? I don't know. The cameras are motion activated, so that means anything moving triggers the cameras. The amount of notifications I've gotten from cars driving by sets the camera off. These are cameras that came with the house that we only felt the need to charge because of a yelling neighbor man at 4 a.m. and a nailed tire. Like, we're not interested in the going-ons of those weirdos. Even if the motion lights is an issue, we can talk about that too, but all this guy wants to do is act tough and call people r -slurs. We get the sense there are some kind of deals going on, as the neighbor man is unemployed, without a license, and regularly has cars parked in front that he leans into for extended periods. Look. Not my business, you mind yours, and I mind mine. He does seem very paranoid about it, though. Today, they got some kind of slip from the city posted on their door. We don't know if it's their utilities or some sort of trash find if that random man was with the city. Recently, the neighbor man has been triggering the cameras and saying out loud, You got the right one, or... You started it, so I'm going to finish you, right in the camera's view. At this point, he has been a progressively escalating campaign of threats and harassment that we constantly try to not engage with. We don't know what to do anymore. I'm scared to even go outside because I know he's watching me. And on top of that, today I noticed his window open in his bathroom, which has a direct view of our kitchen. I don't even feel comfortable in our own home. I don't want to sell it. I just want the same joy we had the first couple of months before this crazy-ass neighbor man moved in. Any of you have any tips? This happened to me when I was in third grade, about eight years old. My regular babysitter was ill, so my mom asked one of our neighbors, Brandy, who had kids and babysat a lot of the neighborhood kids, if she could watch my brother and I for a few hours. We were having so much fun at Brandy's house. When my mom came to pick us up, I asked if I could stay a little longer and finish Madagascar. We had just started it. She said that was fine, but I was to walk straight back home after, like maybe half a block. A block not so far at all. So, as the movie finishes, Brandy said I need to get home fast because it was dark out. As I'm walking home, this other neighbor, Dennis, is standing outside in his yard. I had seen Dennis around the neighborhood because his wife was very unforgettable looking. They have a daughter that was like maybe four-ish at the time, so I didn't ever play with her or know her family outside of seeing them around the neighborhood. Dennis starts calling me, saying, Hey, what are you doing? Me? Uh, going home to my parents? Do you want to come inside for a little bit? No, my mom told me to come straight home. I'm sure she won't mind. Uh, no thanks. I have a daughter who would love to play with you. We can even make snacks. 
at this point I was like, red flag, abort mission, and I started booking it home. Then he starts following me, not quickly, just like walking like Michael Myers. Luckily, I made it home, and once he saw that I was approaching my house with my porch light on, he backed off. I'd like to mention that behind our houses was a giant wooded area with paths that led to the nearby lake. So this dude could have caught me and dragged me into the woods or something. I try not to think like that, but like what other motives could he have had, you know? Fast forward until I'm in high school working at a restaurant in town and I see creepy Dennis and his wife all the time. Turns out, they were secret shoppers at our restaurant. I don't think he recognized me working, thankfully. So Dennis, I hope I don't run into you again. God, I hate my neighbor and her kids. They have a long history of being horrible human beings. Yesterday, they let their pit bull loose just as a mentally challenged local walks past their property. They have been weaponizing their dogs against pedestrians for months. If not, throws itself against the fencing to try to get to people. It gets out often, but the dog warden seems to not care. It almost bit me on January 10th, but my dog distracted it and we got away okay. This guy wasn't as lucky. Our stunned victim walks towards one of the closest kids for help, holding his ripped and bleeding arm. The kid quickly turns his back to ignore the victim, who is in shock, abruptly walks away holding his damaged arm. What the fuck? A bit later, one of my nice neighbors south of me sees the wounded man who is acting like he is in shock, standing in the front of his yard. He asks the victim if he's okay and sees the arm needs stitches and is badly torn apart. The man, who we didn't know at all, but see walking around town all the time, tells him about being attacked by the dog. Nice neighbor texts me about the incident because he knows we've had problems with that animal. I ask for the time it happened and find that two security cameras, I have 12 because of these horrible people, caught the entire thing in 1K and 4K video. Seems the family that owns the dangerous dog would happily pretend nothing happened, hoping this poor mentally challenged guy never reports it. I contacted the sheriff's department, who didn't do much. As soon as the officer left, the mom sends a whole family to the north edge of my property. All of them have a no trespass order from a previous assault incident from last June imposed on them. So they bait, harass, and start generating counter narratives to muddy the water of law enforcement. I have tons of footage of these people screaming the most disgusting things imaginable, all because they refuse to take any responsibility for their own or their dog's actions. Six years of this insanity, and they've only gotten worse. What can I do? I live in a middle townhouse. My neighbors on one side are lovely, never had a problem with them. The neighbors on the other side are a different story. They've been a pain in the ass ever since they moved in over a decade ago. They have big dogs that they walk outside and let piss and shit all over common areas and never clean up after. And they have multiple cars that they park in visitor parking spots because they don't want to have to get a permit for street parking. But the real problem started a couple of years ago when the teenage sons graduated from high school. Around the same time, it seems like the parents split up. And although the mom owns the house, but she frequently stays elsewhere at a boyfriend's house, I assume, but I don't know. The two sons, who are probably around 21 or 22, use the house and they frequently have friends over. Whenever this happens, everybody will hang out 
on their back deck, which is basically underneath my bedroom window because of the way the houses are laid out. Sometimes they play music or watch a game on someone's laptop, but more often it's just everybody getting drunk and high, and then me having to listen to really loud laughing, talking, sometimes yelling or fighting, revving car engines, etc. I don't really care if they're drinking or getting high out there, as long as they're not hurting anybody, but I literally cannot sleep because they're right under my bedroom window. I can clearly hear their conversations and laughter, and even putting on a fan or a sound machine doesn't cover up the noise. In the spring and summer, I can never have my window open because they're out there so often. My town's noise ordinance doesn't specify any kind of time limit on noise, but I've always waited until at least midnight to ask them to be quiet. I or someone else in my family have now talked to them multiple times. I've hesitated to call the cops until now because they're technically on their own property and they're not playing loud music or anything, just talking very loudly. Is this evening something I can call in a noise complaint for? The other night, they were out there until 3 a.m., and after I asked them to go inside, they agreed, but then somebody literally fired a gunshot out back before they went in, so now I'm freaking out as well as pissed off. I really don't want to be the caring neighbor who's always calling the cops on people, but at this point, I'm over it. Tell me what you would do in this situation. This is a long story, but meh. My husband and I live in a duplex. The rent is good for the area. Our neighbors were great. Landlord was pretty cool. Unfortunately, the landlord decided to sell his properties and retire in Florida. The new landlord raised the rent a bit, causing our old neighbors to move after the previous agreement was up. So, next door was up for rent. One day, I'm working from home, and someone rings the doorbell. I'm not expecting anyone. I don't answer because I am on a call. Then, they started knocking and eventually pounding their fists on my door. I asked my boss if I can call them back. It's a random woman. She asks if I live here. I say yes, but I can't really answer any questions. I ask her to leave because I am working, and she interrupted my call. She asks if the landlord's name is X. She just wants to verify it's them because she wants to rent. Eventually, she leaves, and the next week, I see her moving in. I noticed she has four kids. The duplex is basically a house split down the middle, including the parking. The first few days were pretty normal. My neighbor eventually starts leaving them at home alone. She's always at work or always out having fun. She's never home, and they're always home. One day, they were playing outside. We expected a bit of noise. It was midwinter break. Then her kids invited their friends over, and soon it all went downhill. My husband and I have one truck and a car. The kids started running all over the yards and throwing a football near the cars. I would have been fine if they would play on their side only, but they didn't. I ignored it. I wanted to talk to their mom when she was home to ask her if they could only play on their side. Later that day, I peeked outside my window and saw the kids sitting and leaning on my truck. I saw the oldest son go near my truck, and it looks like he was about to pee on it. I went livid. I went outside and yelled at him to pull his pants up and told them all to get away from my truck. The eldest gave me a dirty look. His little friend shot me the bird. I spoke to their mother soon after she got home. They stopped playing near our cars. That same week, I had to make a noise complaint to my landlord. The noise was unbearable. I could feel this side of the house shaking from how much jumping and noise they were making. The mom apologized. 
the new landlord told me to just call the cops next time. I feel like it's a waste calling the cops for noise like this. She doesn't want to be involved in any neighbor problems. Last week, the neighbor's new boyfriend put up a portable basketball hoop for the kids. It's on their side of the driveway. They don't lean on my cars, but they play behind my cars. I've asked them not to play near them, but they just don't listen. We've told the landlord about the issue, and she doesn't care. Youngest kid plays in the road, and cars honk at them to get out of the way. I want to destroy that stupid hoop. Now I'm having issues with my mail. I've caught the two youngest ones opening my mailbox on more than two occasions. Today, I was outside heading towards my truck, and I noticed one kid opening my mailbox. I asked him what he was doing. Why was he opening my mailbox? The kid runs back and ignores my question and heads inside. Another problem I've seen is that they throw whatever mail isn't theirs on the ground. Apart from this, they litter. I've complained to the landlord and maintenance guy about the littering. Maintenance guy says he's seen it too and told the new landlord, but she didn't care. Back to the mail issue. I feel like talking to their mom, but it seems like they just don't listen to her. It's like they just don't give a damn. I've seen the oldest one get arrested before. The cop showed up one day and went inside their home and took him out. I feel like she's one of those moms who just has kids, but doesn't really pay attention to them. They're just kids. I don't want to ruin their life by calling the cops for them, opening my mailbox, but I have had mail gone missing. I've had packages gone missing too. My landlord doesn't do anything. My lease isn't up anytime soon. I had to renew it in January because we can't afford a new apartment or house. My husband then got laid off, so we are at a standstill. We don't have any security footage of the things that these kids do, but I guess we'll continue harassing the cops until something is done. I'm sorry everyone, I come from the old school. Had I done something like this, my dad would have beat the living life out of me, <laughs> and I would never do it again. Moving on. I bought a small house in an older neighborhood in my town in May of 2023. My parents helped me gut the house and renovate it. I put down the down payment, but they did co-sign on the loan with me and helped me pay for renovations. All of my neighbors have been pretty friendly, and I've gladly showed them how the house looks remodeled, with the exception of my neighbors directly to my left. I have never spoken to his wife, and the neighbors we'll just call him Jackson, has been nothing but cold and rude. They are an older, retired couple, probably 65 to 70-ish, and are typically home all day. While remodeling, he came over to tell my parents and I that this was a quiet neighborhood, and to be aware of that. At this point, I wasn't even living there yet, so it was so bizarre. This whole past year, he works on his motorcycle during all hours of the day, and it is very loud since his shop is right near my bedroom window. A few months after moving in, I caught him walking through my yard and then peering into my window, literally pressing his face to the glass itself. He then walked through the landscaping to look through another window. I caught the entire thing on my ring doorbell. I wrote it off as him wanting to see the house, but not wanting to talk to me. Later this summer, every time I would work outside in my garden, he would stop what he was doing and go inside. Again, I wrote this behavior off as them being just generally unfriendly. I always waved to them, and they rarely, if ever, waved back. This past week, this whole thing came to a head. It had been very rainy and very hot so I only had mowed my front and side yard. The backyard was roughly three to four inches tall, unmowed. I didn't think much of it and was going to take care of it on the weekend. My neighbor, Jackson, 
have literally never interacted with his wife, decided my back lawn was too tall. So instead of knocking on the door to tell me, he showed up at my parents' residence across town to talk to them. My mother happened to be home this past Monday since she was having carpet installed and answered the door to my angry neighbor, Jackson. He told her that I needed to mow my backyard or he was going to call the city. She asked why he couldn't talk to me and he responded, I need to talk to the real homeowner. She told him that I am the homeowner and he blew her off. He told her that he has time to take care of things and he knows people and he had looked at the tax records because he didn't believe I owned that house. My mom replied that he can call the city, but she'll call the police because we have him peeping through my windows on camera. He claims he was just looking at my cat. My mom offered her phone number in case there was another issue, and Jackson refused, stating he likes to do things face to face, and then he left. After much discussion, my mom and I decided that I was going to kill them with kindness by inviting Jackson to dinner. If he got to know me, maybe this wouldn't be such an issue. If he was rude, I was going to find ways to be petty back. I came home after work later in the week to find he has installed two motion sensor tracking cameras facing directly towards my property. For context, I do have a static ring camera on the front and back of my house for safety as I live alone. I wouldn't mind if he installed regular security cameras, but these felt like he was sending me a message. The front camera tracked me from the street to my front door and would also follow me in my office and bedroom windows. The back camera tracked me through my back door all the way to the back of my property. I had my parents and several friends come over to confirm that the cameras were tracking motion inside my house, then called the non-emergency police line. An officer came to my house and informed me, without a doubt, those cameras were looking directly onto my property and into my home, and that kind of recording is a felony. He did go ask the neighbor to move their cameras. Jackson claimed he had no idea they were only facing my property and that he has lived in the neighborhood for 37 years and I've lived there less than a year. Luckily, the officer said they didn't care how long anyone lived anywhere. We also showed the officer footage of the grass before it was mowed and he said the city wouldn't have done anything about it unless it was upwards of nine inches tall. Jackson had to get up on a ladder and physically uninstall and reinstall both of his cameras in completely different spots to make them comply to the officer's request. I find it hard to believe it was a misunderstanding. Now that this has happened, he's made a point to repeatedly walk in front of my house over and over to set off my camera or intimidate me in addition to sitting outside right on the property line. Clearly, there's no chance of peace. Not sure what I've done other than have a tallish grass. So, how can I be petty back? My boyfriend and I live in a condo that's on the first floor. And for the past few months, our upstairs neighbor's child has been nonstop stomping around like it's no one's business. Unfortunately, it sends weird vibrations to our walls that's anxiety inducing and also confusing our 12 year old dog. It started around December and then we first confronted her nicely asking if they can minimize the noise level as it's very loud and it also is making our dog anxious. She told us that she has the kid for the holidays and to excuse the noise, which we promptly apologized for even bringing it up. I don't know why we apologized. It got worse as she, the child, would stomp around throughout the entire day and dropping things on the floor from what it sounds like to be pulling furniture we assume she's dragging chairs around, I don't know, which lasted from daytime to almost midnight, 
which prompted my boyfriend to go upstairs once more to talk to the mom, where she told my boyfriend, she's just a child. After weeks of trying to deal with it and doing our best to drown out the noise, I got fed up with it one night because it legit sounded like the kid was doing somersaults upstairs. Very loud banging like she's jumping around. So I went upstairs only to be met with the grandma, I guess, who spoke no English and tried to shoo me off. The child did peek at me and I asked her if she could keep it down as it shakes the apartment downstairs where we are and it's not very pleasant which the child laughed and ran away, but hey, she's like six years old, so I kind of shrugged it off and tried my best to ask the grandma when the mom will be home, which did not work out well because that never happened. We tried our best to just ignore it, and nothing has really changed, and we think the mom lied as it's almost March now, and her kid is still with her. We have been trying to drown it out via TV or trying to not be home at times if it makes us anxious. Now, this is the reason I'm posting this because I like some opinions and also an am I the asshole question. I caught a bad case of the stomach flu and I have been suffering in all aspects and just need some peace and quiet. We had some roofers fix things this morning, so it was already chaotically loud, which was already very stressful for myself and the dog. Fine, the roof has to be fixed and I understand. But on top of that, from 11am to now, it's currently 6pm, I have been listening to stomping, scraping, slamming with our walls and ceiling vibrating and I'm legit losing my effing mind. Although it's still early in the day, would I be an asshole if I went upstairs and asked them to please, once again, to please keep it quiet as I'm extremely sick and the vibrations from the stomping has me wanting to kill myself. Not saying that word for word, but you know. I just need quiet. And if it's one day, it's stressing my body out even more. Will it be bitchy of me to minimize the noise even if it's not quiet hours yet? We don't want to contact the HOA because we know the mom runs out her unit and we feel bad that she's a single mom. However, I feel like the child excuse doesn't mean we have to sacrifice our fucking sanity. My husband and I, both 39, just bought a house. The house has a shared yard area with another house. The yard area is also the very long driveway, so fences can't be added anywhere. Both houses are behind a large shared fence. I should have known something was up because the realtor kept ignoring my questions about the neighbor until signing. Then she gave a brief summary that sounded perfectly fine. Oh, a single woman around 50, she works as a nurse, so she's gone a lot. Has one dog that's very friendly and owns a horse at the stables down the street. My husband was working long hours, so I basically moved into our house alone. Or with the help of our daughters. We had twins who were 16. During this time, I noticed she was home a few days of the days, but never came outside. Cool, I'm outgoing, but also get social anxiety, so fine by me. Saturday comes around and my husband is home and can help move bigger items inside. The second we got there, this woman tripped trying to run out of her house so fast just to say hello. I thought it was weird, but nothing to harp on, and we went about unpacking after a 10-minute combo. It's been six months now, and I'm starting to really lose my cool. If I'm outside, she will wave through the window. If my daughters go outside with our puppy, she goes inside and closes the blinds. If my husband walks out to talk to any of us or to take the dog out, boom, she is outside and in his face. She will talk and talk for so long, I usually give up and go inside. 
she will talk my husband's ear off for up to an hour multiple times a day. On one hand, hey, at least it's not me she is obsessed with. But on the other hand, I've never been allowed to sit on my porch with just my husband. I can't talk to him for more than 15 seconds before she runs over with her dog. I wanted to stay in the deck, but I can't imagine being focused to stay outside with her all weekend while we work. I even returned a patio set my mom bought us because we could never sit outside and have a meal and I don't want chairs for her to sit on and get more comfortable, which she probably would do. I think I would understand more if she was older, lonely, and had no social life. But she does. She actually has friends over every week. Right at this moment, she has some people over, but is still standing in front of my husband's car, talking his ear off while ignoring her guests. All her family and friends know who my husband is. Why? We don't know any of them. The sort of snapping moment where I hit my limit was last night. My daughter was outside training the puppy. My husband had to go help her. He goes outside and this lady trips over our puppy, stands between my husband and daughter, back to my daughter by the way, to have my husband say hi to her sister on FaceTime. Why? Why is this happening? And hurting our puppy? And the kind of pushing my daughter out of the way? Not physically touching, of course. Turns out, my daughters have noticed this a lot. I didn't realize she was making them uncomfortable, too. But she has been. I vented about it to our other neighbor. Turns out, similar things happened with the previous owner. And it's a big reason she sold her house. Now what? I can't get sprinklers. I can't get a fence or bushes to block anything. What is this woman's deal? What do I do? I really want to know what her deal is. Okay, I just read that story and I was thinking the entire time, why didn't she just cuss her out? <laughs> it works for me. Back to the stories. I have a bad habit of invalidating myself, so I'm in need of some clarity on if my neighbors are truly from hell, or at least if they are just assholes. I live in a small studio above a restaurant. I've been there about three years, and the restaurant moved in just over a year ago. I've had a few fine interactions with their staff and managers. Recently, we had a leak that we had to work together to get the landlord to fix. Our landlord is useless. So I have one of the manager's phone numbers. That manager and another employee followed me on Instagram after that event. Amazon delivers packages to my back door, which is just to the left of the restaurant's back door. I have a note stating which door to leave packages at, and usually they go there. But sometimes the driver doesn't read closely, and they end up at the restaurant's door. Two feet to the right, we share a walkway. I have had three packages get delivered recently that were left in between the two doors or left outside the restaurant's door. All three of these packages were immediately, within minutes of delivery, taken in by the restaurant employees and I've had to retrieve them. The same guys that followed me on Instagram brought in the packages. The manager even texted me with one letting me know they took it. I told them sometimes Amazon leaves it at the wrong door, and I would appreciate it if they just left it next to the door instead of taking it inside. He said the Amazon driver insisted he hand it off to the employees, but the driver left a picture showing the package left in our shared walkway. Then today I found my bike sticking out of the dumpster. It's a nice bike in great condition. I usually keep it in my car. 230 square foot studio has no room. But had guests in town that I was driving around this weekend and needed the back seat. I did what I have done many times before and tucked the bike under the stairs going up to my back door. 
It had a combination lock looped around the railing, but the lock is kind of broken and can just be jiggled out of place. If it had been stolen for this reason, I would blame myself, but that was not the case. This bike is almost completely hidden here and nowhere near the restaurant. I only have a couple of neighbors or fellow tenants who I know well and that they did not do it, and I can't imagine anyone else but the restaurant folks. It was only visible if you were already in the shared walkway. It seems like with this, along with the packages, they are either messing with me or just don't know how to leave my stuff alone and mind their business. So, are my neighbors from hell or am I just overreacting? And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true neighbors from hell. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes and the gifted memberships. Patty's niece, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Chrissy Elias, Denise S., Tina Mee, Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Amy Klimko, Sugared Spite, and Anita B. Thank you all for remaining the pillars of which BTA rests upon. I truly appreciate your continued support and our gifted memberships. The Conspiracy Archives, Grimm's Library, Adam Grigg, Nat Davies, and The Cryptid Sleeves. Thank you all so much for your support as well. To the subscribers and everyone else just peeking in to listen, thank you for visiting Back to Ashes and supporting the channel. It really does help the channel grow. Besides, without you, I don't have a voice. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.